Chapter 6, Scorned. Psalm 22, verse 6. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. Up to this point, Jesus' prayer has been theological as he has embodied the words of doubt, longing, and faith in the psalm, we have been able to stand somewhat apart from the events on Calvary and just observe. The next few verses, however, take us into the terror of the moment on the cross. Here, in verse 6, the psalm changes perspective. Its focus is on the plaintiff. As Jesus recites the psalm verse by verse, it takes on a very personal meaning. Humbly and with great sorrow and compassion, we are able to see into the heart of our Lord. When he remembers the phrase, but I am a worm and no man, he's speaking for the first time of himself. In the book of Exodus, when our God first revealed himself to Moses, he uses a code phrase that is found in other places in the Bible. Do you remember the story? Moses was told by God to speak to Pharaoh and order the release of God's people from Egypt. Moses, of course, is reluctant. He wanted to have some answers to questions that the Israelites were sure to ask. Moses asked God, Who, should I say, sent me? To you? God's answer is mysterious. Tell them, I am sent you. This is God's name. I am. Simple. Simple? Hardly. There is more depth packed into those two words than we will ever fathom. I am is the eternally present tense. God not only is the I was, but he's also the I will be and the great I am. He is the eternal now who was and is and is to come. Book of Revelation tells us that. In the New Testament, the writer of John's gospel exalts Jesus to the highest place in the universe. In the beginning was the word, Jesus, and the word, Jesus, was with God, and the Word, Jesus, was God. He, Jesus, was at the beginning with God. All things were made through him, Jesus, and without him, Jesus, was not anything made that was. John chapter 1. And Jesus described himself in exalted terms like this as well. In John's Gospel again, Jesus use God's name from Exodus to speak of himself. Seven times in the Gospel of John, Jesus refers to himself as the I am. I am the bread of life. I am the door for the sheep. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. And I am the true vine. Each of these seven statements tell us that Jesus is eternally present and the future one. He He is the always now, the great I am. But now, on the cross, in a in a drastic contrast. Jesus identifies himself with the, with the lowest form of life on earth. I am a worm. Jesus, the Son of God, from on high, has been brought low. He descended from the throne of heaven to earth, but he's been further rejected, despised, debased, humiliated on the cross. As Jesus prays Psalm 22, He applies to himself the lowest terms ever associated with a man. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. 
Jesus came down to earth as a man to live our lives and die our death. This much we know. But in his death, the great I am emptied himself of his heavenly prerogative. He has stripped himself of all dignity that should be accorded to him. He is the lowest, weakest, most vile form of flesh on earth. He's like a worm, he says, a common, ugly grub. On the cross, we are seeing the total humiliation of his humanity and the total destruction of his divinity. Let's pray. Father, we are humbled that the Son of God, the great I Am, humbled himself on the cross and became nothing. Lord, what great love you have to go to the very depths, the very depths of degradation for us because you love us so much. Lord, as we continue this, this series looking at the cross of Jesus through this song, Father, remind us again of your great love for us. We bless you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a couple of questions for you to think about today. What does it mean to you that God is eternally present? Which of those seven I am statements from the gospel according to John speak most to you? And have you ever been completely humiliated? I think we should just pray once again right now, especially about that last question. Father, all of us have gone through those times when we have felt deep humiliation. Lord, we, in a, in a, in a very small way, we, we experience what Jesus experienced. But Lord, we also know that you have been risen to new life. And Lord, that through your, your faithfulness on the cross, we are victors. That even in the place of deepest humiliation, we know, Lord, you can lift us up. So I bless my friends today. Lord, continue to show us your heart. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, God bless your day, and I'll see you next time.